Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Eat the Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect to the blockchain with Web3. Something that is very surprising about Web3 is that by itself, it doesn't know how to communicate with the blockchain. When you instantiate Web3, you need to give it a provider object. It is this object that will actually do the communication with the blockchain. In the code of your decentralized application, you will not have to deal directly with this provider. You will only call the method of Web3, but behind the hood, Web3 will delegate the execution of this method to the provider that will actually send the API call to the Ethereum blockchain. So you might wonder, why do we have such a complex design? Well, the reason is flexibility. We don't want to impose any constraint on how the user will connect to the blockchain. So by having this design, the user can decide which wallet it's going to use. Typically, an Ethereum wallet will expose a provider object as a global object in JavaScript. So a new decentralized application will test if you find this provider object exposed and if it exists, then you will use it to instantiate Web3. And by doing so, you will connect to the Ethereum blockchain using the connection of the wallet of the user. By the way, if you're interested in Web3, make sure to grab my Web3 cheat sheet link in the description. All right, enough talking. Now let's do some coding. So I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to open a file to show you how you can connect to the blockchain with Web3. So the first thing is you import Web3 in your project. So you define a variable called Web3 with an uppercase W. And that's important that it's uppercase because we need to differentiate the Web3 object to the Web3 instance. And then you're going to define another variable. So this time Web3 with a lowercase W. So that's the Web3 instance and you instantiate Web3 that way. So you open parentheses and you give it a URL to your Ethereum node. So for example, if you use Ganache, the blockchain for local development, that's gonna be HTTP localhost 8545. And now we are connected to the blockchain yeah so what about this provider thing that i explained just before because we don't see any provider object here it seems much more simple right well that's because i've actually used a shortcut so behind the scene web3 is going to use this url and turn it into a provider but what actually happened is this so let's define another variable. So Web3 expose a function to create provider from URL. So this is found under web3.providers.http provider and then you give it your URL. Oops, I forgot the new keyword here. All right, so you can replace your URL but by the provider object. So this is just to explain you how it works behind the scene, but in your project, you can just use the shortcut and like use the URL directly here as an argument to Web3. All right, so next we're gonna build a custom provider to understand how it works. So let's do this. So let's call this custom provider. So a provider is an object that has a method that is called send async. And this method is gonna receive two arguments. The first one is a payload that identify the API of Ethereum that we want to call. And the second one is a callback function that we will call once we get the response from the Ethereum blockchain. And so we're just going to console log everything. So console log you called then let's console log the payload and after that we're going to call the callback so the first argument of the callback is if there was an error so in our case let's assume there was no error so we pass undefined 
And second, we pass the response from the Ethereum API. So in this example, we're not actually calling any Ethereum API, but in a real case, that's what you will do. So I'm gonna pass a number as the response of the Ethereum API here, and you will understand just after why I do this. By the way, just to be clear, who calls the send async method here? This is Web3. Whenever you use the API of Web3, it's going to delegate to the provider by calling the send async method. And it's going to tell the send async method which API of Ethereum to call with the payload argument here. All right, so now let's modify our Web3 instance that use our custom provider. So we don't need the old provider anymore and we're gonna replace that by our custom provider. So that's cool, we're connected to the blockchain, but if we want to see our console log print something here, we need to actually do a call to the blockchain. So we're gonna call web3.eth.get block number it's going to give you the latest block number of the blockchain but in our case we're not going to get the real answer because we we created this custom provider here i'm going to wait for my promise with a then method and i'm just going to console log done all right so now Let's run this script. So I open another terminal and I'm going to start my Ganache instance with Ganache Shellai. By the way, if you don't know what is Ganache, you can check my video series on Ganache on Eat the Blocks. All right. So now our local blockchain is running. So let me run my script and see what happens. Okay, so we have some nasty error message here and it's probably because I did something wrong in the provider, but let's just ignore this because the most important is that our console log statement works. So you can see here you called and then this is the content of the payload object. So JSON RPC ID, you can ignore this. This is part of the JSON RPC protocol. But what is interesting is the method argument and the params here. So we called ETH underscore block number. So that's the name of an API. API on Ethereum and then we provided no parameters. So if we were building a real provider, we will actually forward the call to the Ethereum API. Before we finish on this topic of provider, I'd like to highlight the fact that in most cases, you will not have to build your custom providers, but you will only use providers that are already injected in the JavaScript code. Okay, so now we understand better what is a provider and we also know how we can connect to the blockchain by using Web3 and Ganache. But the problem is that actually in a real use case scenario, you will not connect directly to Ganache, but you will connect to the wallet of a user like, uh, like MetaMask, for example. So... I will do an other series on MetaMask and how to integrate Web3 with MetaMask because that's uh, that's a whole topic in itself. So I don't want to mix too many different things um, at the same time. And I want to keep this series just focused on, on Web3. But very, very quickly, if you are impatient, I'm going to give you a spoiler. So for MetaMask, it's how you would do it. So instead of the custom provider, you will pass it window.ethereum and before you will need to test that this object exists because this is not guaranteed that this is uh, injected and uh, and after you do this you also need to uh, wait for window uh, ethereum dot, uh, dot enable because this is going to ask the user to give access to to the dap um, otherwise, um, MetaMask is not going to work. So this is only for the new version of MetaMask. But for the old version, then the provider is inside window.web3.current uh, provider. Yeah, but as I said, it's just a spoiler. It's uh, there's actually 
uh, more complexity than this. So I'm going to explain you this in a whole other series. All right, that's it for this video on how you can connect to the blockchain with Web3 and Ganache. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create a contract instance that is an object that you can use to communicate with a smart contract. So we are really getting closer to the interaction with a smart contract. Things are getting exciting. If you have any questions, ask them in a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.